Hello and welcome to Bay College's Intermediate Algebra Online Lectures. This is part two of section 5.2 where we're dealing with adding and subtracting rational expressions. We're going to look at what we do when we have unlike denominators. We have to have a common denominator in order to add or subtract our rational expressions. They're nothing more than fractions. So let's take a look at some examples that we should be somewhat familiar with. Here we have 7 15 just a fraction of rational number, plus 5 6, another rational number. But in order to add these, we have to have a common denominator. Well, the key to finding that common denominator, what we call the least common denominator, we want to keep our numbers as small as possible, is to factor. And we're going to do that with our rational expressions. 15, I can factor to 5 and 3, because 5 times 3 is 15. These are the factors of 15, prime factorization. We can do the same thing to 6, which we get 2 times 3. Now, if we want to determine the LCD, the LCD, as defined in the last video, was to have all the factors and their multiplicities, or to their highest powers. Well, if we look at the factors we have, we have 5 and a 3, just one time in each. And we have a 2, so I need 5, 3, and 2. If I multiply those factors together, my LCD, and I'll write it right up here, my LCD is 5 times 2 times 3, which is 30. So I have to change this to have a denominator of 30. Well, in order to do that, I've got to give this the factor of 2, the one that it's missing. It has a 5 and a 3, but it doesn't have a 2. So what we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. Essentially, we're multiplying by 1. So if I do 2 times 7, I get 14. 2 times 5 is 15. So I have 14 oh, 30. So I misspoke there. 2 times 15 is 30. Now, if we look at this one, it has the factor of 2, it has the factor of 3, but it needs that factor of 5. So I'm going to give it its factor of 5. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I multiply by 1. 5 times 5 is 25. And 6 times 5 is 30. Once we have the common denominator, we can just add the numerators. 14 and 25 is 39. Hopefully, you watched the previous video, and this example actually looks familiar. And then we can reduce. And we reduce just like we worked here, factor. We factor and reduce. Well, 39 is 3 times 13, and 30 is 3 times 10. We can reduce common factors to 1. 1 times 13 tenths is equal to 13 tenths. When it comes to subtraction, we do the exact same thing. Let's factor. We have 4 and 5. And I could factor this 4 down further. But I notice, hey, that 4 is a common factor. So this one needs a 5 in order to be common of 20. And 20 is our LCD. It contains the factor of 4 and the factor of 5. These are the two factors we need. 4 times 5 is 20. So what do I have to do to this? I have to give it that factor of 5. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So we multiply by 1. 5 times 3 is 15. 4 times 5 is 20. So this is 15 twentieths, twentieths minus 3 twentieths. And now, oh. Now we have that common denominator. We can just subtract the numerators. 15 minus 3 is 12 twentieths. And again, we've got to reduce. So I'm going to break this back down. 4 and 5, this is 4 times 3, we have that common factor of 4. We can reduce it. 1 times 3 fifths is 3 fifths. So <clears throat> hopefully this is familiar to us and we know how to do this. Now let's apply it to rational expressions. Rational expressions are just fractions that contain polynomials, whether they're monomials or binomials or, or what have you. So here we look at this and we say, OK, well, let's, what are the factors here? 6 is the factors of 2 times 3. Well, this has a factor of 3. It needs a factor of 2. So 6 is part of my LCD, if I just consider the coefficients first. Now we have a y here, but we have y squared. Two factors of y. Well, we also need two factors of y for both of them. So this is my LCD. So I look at this and say, what do I have to give this so that it has all of these factors? I have to multiply it by another y. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I have 6y squared 
1 times y, so I have y over 6y squared. If I look at this one, well, what factor is it missing? Well, in order to have a 6, I have to give this that factor of 2. So I'm going to give it that factor of 2, top and bottom. All right, it may get a little messy as we go, but hopefully we just keep things separated by that addition sign. Well, now that I've done this, let's just rewrite it. I have y over 6y squared plus 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 3 is 6y squared. So now that I have that, I can say, OK, we have the same denominator, 6y squared. Let's add those numerators. y plus 6y, well, they're not like terms. So there's really not much I can do with them. It's y plus 6y. We cannot reduce any further because we do not have any common terms. This is, or excuse me, common factors. This is a term. So don't cancel those sixes. Don't do it. Otherwise, if you're one of my students, I'm going to be very harsh about something like that. I stress that. All right, let's look at another example. Sometimes factoring and reducing can get us what we need a lot sooner. Um, if we look at this, we have a minus 2 and we have 4 minus 2a. Well, one clue to start here should say, hey, my a isn't in descending order. It's actually last when, and my number's first. So maybe I can just switch that order and have negative 2 plus 4, because I have a negative 2a and a positive 4. So I could maybe switch its order. And then try and factor it. Well, let's do that. Negative 2a plus 4. So I've dealt with that. It is the same quantity. I just changed the order. Now, if I factor out of this a 2, because I can see, hey, that 2 can be factored out, I'd have 2 times negative a minus 4. Or excuse me, 2. Here I have a minus 2. The only difference between those quantities, if I just factor out a 2, is their signs. So let's change the signs. We can do that with any number by factoring out a negative 1, or in this case, a negative 2. If I factor out a negative 2, I get a positive a and a negative 2. Look, I see that right now. I say, hey, one of those factors is common. Now I could at this point say, OK, well, this is the factor that this one doesn't have, so I could give it to it, top and bottom, negative 2, negative 2. Or I could check and say, does this reduce? Well, what is 4 over negative 2, right? We can reduce that. 4 over negative 2 is negative 2. So I'm going to reduce 4 and negative 2 to get negative 2. And we can check that. Is negative 2 times negative 2 back to 4? Yes, it is. So now if we do that. We have our LCD. Our LCD is actually a minus 2. That's our least common denominator. So no matter which way you approach it, hopefully you come to the same result in the end. So I'm just going to rewrite this. Now that it has a common denominator, I'm adding a negative 2 over a minus 2. Now that they have that common denominator, negative 1 plus a negative 2, be careful with your signs, is going to be negative 3 over that common denominator. That's the answer. We're going to stop right there. Nothing's going to reduce here. But before we move on, I just want to point out sometimes, maybe you did this a little bit different, and your answer is going to look different. It doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. And maybe you just went about it a different way. That's the thing about algebra. Sometimes we don't get the same result as our instructor did. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. There's different ways to represent our answers. All right, let's move on to this next example here. The first thing we want to do is identify, yep, these denominators are different. So let's factor and see all these factors and say, what are the factors we need? So I look at this and I recognize it. It is the difference of squares. 81 is a perfect square. So let's factor it. It's y plus 9, y minus 9, the difference of squares. And now I can see, hey, we got a common factor. I'm going to need that. And we have some uncommon factors. So we have to have all the factors that are unique. So my LCD, I'll just write it right here, is y plus 9. We also need a 2 and a y minus 9. These are the unique factors to their highest powers that exist in these two rational expressions. So if I look at this one, what does it need in order to have this LCD? It needs a 2. So I'm going to give it a 2 top and bottom. So if I multiply 2 times 27, I get 54. 
and 2 times this quantity, leave it as a factored form. Don't worry about distributing that 2, right? All right, and then we look at this one here. We have 2 and y plus 9, but we need this LCD. It's missing this factor, so let's give it that factor of y minus 9, top and bottom. So essentially, we multiply by 1. All right, so plus 3 times y minus 9. Actually, what I'm going to do here, just to kind of save some board space, is I'm going to distribute. That's what I have to do here. 3 times this quantity, distribute to 3. So I get 3y minus 27 over this common denominator that I'm leaving in factored form. All right? And now it's simply addition. Once we have those common denominator, we can just add the top. 54 plus 3y minus 27. These are my common terms. 54 plus a negative 27 is 54 minus 27. So I get a positive 27. 3y is the only term containing y. So 3y plus 27 is what this would simplify to. 3y and 54 minus 27 is positive 27. And they all have the same denominator. 2 times y plus 9 times y minus 9. Now just like with any of our fractions, we have to factor and reduce. Let me factor this. I look at 3y and I see 27. And I say, hey, they have a common factor of 3. If I factor that out, I'm left with y plus 9. This factor is the same as that factor. Any number divided by itself, y plus 9 is some number. We don't know what y is, but it's the same top and bottom. So we can reduce it. So what's left? I have a 3 on top. I'll just write it right here. And my denominator is 2 times this quantity. And it's acceptable when dealing with rational expressions to leave it in a factored form. This is simplified. You don't have to distribute. But if you did distribute and you had 3 over 2y minus 18, that's an acceptable answer as well. It may look different, but it is the same quantity. That's the important part. All right, let's look at another example. So this one was addition. This one here is subtraction. Let's take a look at it. First thing I want to do is find out what are my factors in my denominator. They're different denominators, so let's factor this. Again, I see a difference of squares. You're going to see a lot of that in this class. So hopefully, your factoring skills are strong. And you could say, hey, I recognize those squares. I can write it as the difference of squares, the sum and difference in its factors. Now, if I look at that, hey, we have a common factor. But this is what the factor that we need over here as well. So our LCD. This is my LCD, both of those factors. So let's give this that factor of x minus y. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So let's rewrite it down here. 1 times x minus y is just x minus y. 1 times anything doesn't change it. And then we have our common denominator, x plus y, x minus y, minus 8 over x plus y, x minus y. Now, one thing you could do to save time, I'm not skipping any steps, but I could just write this quantity over a single denominator. Because they are the same, I could just write it under one or over one denominator. All right. So now we just have to add the numerators. Now that the denominator is common, we're going to have this denominator. So I have x minus y minus 8. There are no like terms, so it is what it is. x minus y minus 8, no like terms. Now, can I factor this? No, nothing common between these ter terms. So this isn't going to factor, which means it's not going to cancel any of the factors uh, in the denominator. So that's it. We can stop right there. All right, <coughs> excuse me. Let's look at this last example here of dealing with rational expressions. If I have negative 7 over this trinomial, minus 2 over this binomial, I have to factor this. And it's not one of our special products like difference of squares. So what we have to do is we have to say, OK, well, this coefficient is 1. So I can concern myself with this value here, positive 2. What are the factors of positive 2? that combine to give me negative 3. 
Well, I know two negatives when multiplied together give me a positive. So my factors have to be both negative. So I'm ready to factor this. y times y is y squared. And the negative factors of 2, since 2 is our only even prime number, negative 2 and negative 1. So both factors are negative. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Negative 2y. And negative y is negative 3y's. y times y is y squared. So I FOIL it back out to make sure I factored it correctly. So these are my factors. And I notice, hey, good news. We have a common factor. So we've got to look at what's not common. What do I have to do with this y minus 2? This is my LCD. It contains all the factors, this one and another one. So I have to give this the factor y minus 2, because that's what's missing. But what I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. Multiply by 1. So now I could just take them and rewrite it. Negative 7, and I'll do it this way, negative 7 over y minus 2, y minus 1, minus this whole quantity, right? So because it's a quantity, let's just do that. I have to distribute that 2, because we have to simplify. 2 times y is 2y. 2 times negative 2 is a negative 4. Now the reason why I put these brackets here is because it's subtraction. Now I had mentioned over here, we could rewrite this over the same denominator. So that's what I did. I took the negative 7 minus this quantity. So I use these brackets. But this is key here. We've got to watch these signs. We're subtracting the entire numerator that we had here. So essentially, I can distribute that to each value. If I distribute that to each value, I can eliminate these. Distributing a negative just changes the signs. And now we're ready to just wrap it up. We have a negative 7 and a positive 4. These are my like terms. Negative 7 and 4 is negative 3. Minus 2y. Well, negative 2y is a term all in itself. No other common terms to that. So negative 2y minus 3, both are over that common denominator. I'm missing a parenthesis there. And if we look at this, there's nothing that's going to factor out of here other than maybe a negative 1. But there's no negative 1 here that, as a factor that I could reduce. So that's as far as we can go. And maybe your answer might look a little different. It doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. It just depends on what approach you took to come to this conclusion. All right, that has been the second part to section 5.2. Thank you for watching.